Uh, uh, she, she will talk about food, um, the fact that food must be a key component of any city's residence strategy. I welcome Barbara Emanuel, manager uh, of uh, Toronto's food strategy, uh, together with Eleni Mirivili, deputy mayor for urban nature, resilience, and climate change adaptation in Athens. Okay? So... So I am Eleni Mirivili, the, the, and I'm going to call Barbara up afterwards so she doesn't sit here awkwardly while I speak. <laughs> and um, yeah, I can. So um, is it on? Pressing the wrong thing, eh? I got it. Um, so uh, it was actually Barbara's talk, and then I was in Toronto because uh, Toronto won the award last year from the Urban uh, Food Policy Pact Awards for a specific uh, um, uh, action initiative that is called uh, Food for Newcomers. And uh, both Athens and Thessaloniki decided that we wanted to replicate it. So we went to Toronto to see how it works. And now we're starting to actually uh, build these this initiatives both in Athens and in Thessaloniki. So we were talking with Barbara, whom I've known for several years now. And she said, I'm talking about this at the, in uh, Tel Aviv. Why don't we do this speech together? So this is how this kind of came up. Uh, so I'm doing kind of an introduction and then... Um, so, I'm not, there we go, I got it. So, um, I think this image is kind of very scary. Uh, and I think it's kind of, in, in a very visual way, it is shocking to see what this number kind of means in, in a visual way. So, resilience in uh, the way that Costantina was talking about, because I'm part of the 100 Resilient Cities Project, so that's how I learned about resilience. Um, uh, talks about cities being vulnerable because we have these big things that are happening all around the world, which are basically three things, climate change, urbanization, people coming to cities, and globalization, the movement of capital, people, and uh, knowledge in ways that has never happened before in the way that it's happening now, which kind of makes cities um, more vulnerable to, to, to change, to big kind of pos the, the, the possibility of large change. Um, so, um, these, um, these three issues, these three big global issues are um, making, uh, making cities uh, today are making them um, loom larger and larger within food systems um, as, um, as well as become kind of more vulnerable to, um, to changes in the way that foods, food systems work. So in order to have equitable and functional food systems, um, both in good times and in bad times, you have to build resilient food systems. Um, the idea is that city planners up to today have been planning cities, thinking of shelter, thinking of air, thinking of water, uh, land, but very seldomly have they uh, planned cities around food and, they, and their food systems. And this is a re recent thing, and I want to hear kind of salute and to, and to um, uh, re, um, what is it called, congratulate and rejoice the fact that the year 2014 uh, and the year 2015 were two very important years because it was cities themselves as well as um, civil society and regional governments that uh, brought to a fore uh, the, the issue of food systems and how important it is uh, for, um, for, for cities and for citizens and for planning. So the fact that, uh, for example, in Paris, in COP21, uh, very few cities brought up the issue. Uh, actually, it, cre it became an issue uh, when cities were talking, when we were talking about climate change and CO2 uh, emissions, food was not taken into consideration. In big networks like C40 before those years and before the uh, Milano Urban Food Pact uh, was signed by all the signatories, C40 did, wasn't thinking of food as a really 
it, even though it was 30%, and we knew that it was 30% of, of, uh, of the emission production was through the whole circle of food, food was not really in the forefront of people that thought either of climate change or of cities or of resilience. So this is a very recent thing, and the fact that we're all sitting in this room and we're all kind of practitioners, I would like to salute, because I really think that we have been pushing each one of us in different ways to recognize this extremely important uh, element in the way that people can live and survive in a more dignified and in a more kind of uh, um, sustainable way around this world. Um, so um, I'm going to pass down to this. This, this idea of... Um, of um, I, I, I want to, to say something that I really like very much, which is from Kevin Borg. I have five minutes. I had seven minutes. and No, we have 15 minutes together. So I've taken 10 minutes already? Are you serious? <laughs> is it possible? Uh, OK, then I'll, 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 I'll well, then I will give the floor to Barbara because I feel very honored to be working with her in the steering committee of the Milan Urban Food Park. She's one of the most significant practitioners in food systems around the world. Toronto, the, the Toronto example has been very, for, for many decades, one of the most kind of forefront cities in uh, food city council and uh, bringing food into the work of the city. So I'm going like, to Όχι, δεν ζηλεύω, αλλά λέω είναι δυνατό. Δεν λέει κάτι αυτά, εγώ λέξει λάθο. Μίλησα για τρία με τέσσερα λεπτά και μέτρησα τον εαυτό μου όταν κάνω. I had measured myself already and this was four minutes to attend. Because I had pre measured myself. While we find in my presentation, that was a really over the top uh, introduction, so uh, you know, just tone it down. Um, I must say, uh, we are lucky in the city of Toronto to have a very strong food policy foundation. Uh, we have had a food policy council for 27 years, and uh, we established a food strategy uh, in 2010. So uh, this work is not going to be talking about the work of the Food Strategy or the Food Policy Council other than uh, the recent work that we're doing around uh, resilient food systems and resilient cities. Um, so the City of Toronto um, recently uh, identified uh, the need to conduct a food vulnerability assessment because uh, of the recognition that we all have uh, that cities all over the world are vulnerable to climate change. So we decided that we needed to identify the most significant climate risks and to identify actions uh, that we can take or begin to take to mitigate those risks. Um, so, uh, we, did, we uh, contracted ICIC, which has done a lot of work for the 100 resilient cities, actually, across uh, North America. Uh, so, we could build on their methodology and conduct this research really fast. And it's a beginning of um, a, a, a food flow analysis for the city of Toronto, essentially. I think um, if we look at uh, how uh, the whole food system works, uh, from food processing, distribution, the retail, the, the consumption, the food waste, the food system approach, and understand it in the context of uh, vulnerabilities, we can begin to uh, address 
where we need to take action uh, on uh, in the context of resilience. So if you can go, I'll move really fast. <clears throat> So uh, the city of Toronto is uh, the extreme weather events uh, that we uh, experience in Toronto are uh, significant rainfall and flooding, uh, heat waves that go on for extended periods and major winter ice storms. So those are the three major climate change vulnerabilities. And, you know, we are less vulnerable than many other cities in the global south, but we still have uh, these extreme weather events in Toronto. So, <clears throat> so what we looked at and what this research found, and you can see uh, this report was just tabled at City Council last month. So if anybody is interested in looking at the detailed report, uh, it's available online. Um, but what we uh, identified, we looked uh, at the flooding situation and what the implications were for our critical infrastructure. And we particularly looked at the Ontario Food Terminal, which is the central distribution point for much of the fresh produce that comes in and out of the city. It's the second largest food terminal in North America. Um, we also identified uh, at the much more granular neighborhood level what are the food access issues in the context of this climate change. Um, and